Hi, this is Dave Wolber from USF and AppInventor.org. I'm going to show you how to build apps with App Inventor, and I'm going to show you how to build the I Have a Dream app, which is just a picture of Martin Luther King, and you tap it and play a speech. Okay, first thing you do, no setup. Just go to ai2.appinventor.mit.edu. So App Inventor runs kind of in the cloud, so you don't need to download software, typically speaking. So go to this URL, and this is where you'll build your apps. Okay, um, I'm going to start you off with a starter app. Um, just so we don't have to load a bunch of media because we've got some pictures and some sound files and, and so we're going to start with that app. So go to appinventor.org slash starter apps and you notice I have a new tab to do this. And I'm just going to download this I have a dream starter.aia. The .aia, this is a source file project for App Inventor. Okay, so I've just downloaded that to my computer. I'm going to go back to App Inventor and project import click on choose file and I'm going to grab that starter app that I just downloaded. Okay, here it comes. And this is going to load in. This this starter app has no code really. It's just got a bunch of pictures and sound files preloaded. So so you won't have to go through doing that. And if you'll notice come down here a little bit, um, there's all these files here. These are just pictures and sound clips. Okay, and we're we're going to load these into our app. So so the app has them, but the user interface is not showing them. So let's kind of build our user interface. It's going to be very simple. First thing I want you to do is, with the screen component, um, choose center. So we're going to center all our stuff. All right? And then I'm going to drag in a button component. Okay? And this is what the user is going to click on to play the speech. And on this button, I want to put a picture. So what I'm going to do is click on image. And it's going to show me all these media files. And I'm going to choose mlk.jp. PG. Okay. Of course, you could put any picture files here in, in your app, but this, this is a picture MLK. That's great. I'm going to get rid of the text for the button. Okay, I don't want that to show up. Okay, now I've got this button with a picture on it. All right. I'm going to add a label and put it up here, and I'm going to set that label to uh, Martin Luther King. So labels are just kind of fixed text. Um, you know, the user can't type in them. They're just, just labels, right? Um, I'm going to grab another label and put it below uh, the picture. And on this one, I'll just say, you know, tap to, to hear the speech. Okay, pretty simple user interface at, at this point. All right, so I've got those guys. I want my background to be black. I think it'll look better with our black and white pictures. Um, so I'm going to choose a black background. Notice my text no longer appears. So I'm going to go back to these labels, and I'm going to change their text color to white. Okay, same thing on the second label. I just need to change its text color so it so it actually shows up. Okay, we can mess around with font size and and uh, boldness to make things look better, but for now we've got this this user interface set up. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do user interface wise is I'm going to grab a player component. And I went to the media drawer and I'm going to grab this player component and drag it in. All right? And that is going to be the thing that actually plays the speech by Martin Luther King. What I need to do, just like with an image or a button where I you know, set the actual image file, I need to associate a sound file with this guy. And if I go to Player 1's Properties and click on Source, I'll choose the Martin Luther King speech, which is king.mp3. Okay, so now I've got my user interface. I've got a component that knows how to play sound clips, in this case a speech and I'm pretty much ready to go and build the behavior and you're gonna see that when I click on this blocks okay but let's just check you know let's just test our app out right now the great thing about App Inventor one great thing is you can test your apps as you're as you're working and you might have noticed I've got this phone looking thing over here this is actually a projection of the phone that's sitting on my desk right here this is a uh, an Android phone okay and what I am running is the MIT App Inventor 2 Companion Okay, and this is like the testing app for App Inventor, and you can download it from the Android Play Store. In fact, that's the only really setup you need to do. So make sure you have that companion on your phone. Once you do, okay, I can say connect over here and choose AI Companion, and a little QR code comes up. Now on my phone, I can click scan QR code. Okay, it's going to let me scan the QR code. Yeah, it looks like my phone just kind of the projection thing turned off for a second. Here it comes back. Okay, and let me make sure that we can see it the right way. There it goes. 
Okay, so what this is doing is as I'm developing an app inventor, it'll show me what my app looks um, like over here. Okay, so anyway, we've got our user interface set up. We know it's kind of working like we want it. We'll, we'll probably fix it to make it look better a little later. Okay, now we're ready to do the behavior. Now that we've built the user interface for the app, we're, we're going to build the behavior for the app. We're going to do the coding part. Okay, and we've been in the App Inventor Designer. I'm going to click on Blocks over here, and this brings up the App Inventor Blocks Editor. Okay, you're not going to see any textual code. You're going to see more like puzzle pieces, like little blocks that you can kind of connect together. Okay, in this case, we want to go grab button one, and he's got these events, all right, and I want to grab the click event. So when button one is clicked, and button one, remember, has this picture of Martin Luther King on it, when it's clicked, we want to do something. So whatever blocks I put in here will be in response to that click. And in this case, it's pretty simple. We want to grab our player component and we want to start his, his sound, okay, his clip. We want to play that speech, right? And remember, if we go back to the designer, player one component is associated with this king.mp3 file. So that's the sound it's going to, going to start, okay? All right, great. Let's, let's try this out. Um, remember, we've got um, our app inventor companion running and showing our app here on the phone. So I'm, I've got my phone on my desk. I'm going to tap the picture of Martin Luther King. I have a dream. And there goes the speech. Okay. So we've kind of built an, built an app here. A pretty simple one. But we've built it. I'm going to hit back to, to stop that guy because uh, uh, to stop his speech. Okay. So you built your first app if, if you're following along. And you know, let's just notice a couple things. You know, an app is made up of these event handlers. Okay, they're going to get you know much more complex as we move along with different different tutorials. But this basic fundamental is when something happens, the user clicking, a text coming into the phone, um, two objects colliding. You know, those are called events. You're going to respond with some function calls. In this case, let's just start a sound click. Okay. All right, so we've tested our app with the companion, but that companion is just a testing app. You really, you know, we don't really have the, the app on, on the phone, okay? But it's real easy. Just go up to build, and you say, save to my computer, okay? And I'm going to build the app and save to my computer. And this is going to create a .apk file, okay? And the .apk file is an executable Android app. It's the kind of thing you install on your, on your phone or your tablet. You can put this on the Play Store. I don't know if you want to put the simple app on the Play Store, but you could. You can, but you know, more more importantly, you can kind of email it to your friends and family, right? So you basically will get this file on your computer, email it to yourself or someone else. You can see it just downloaded, and then that person takes their phone, opens their email, and opens the uh, the email on their phone, and then can tap the attachment, okay? And then they can uh, install the app. So it's a pretty quick way to get apps to people um, without using the Play Store. And that's how we do things like in the class I teach at USF. Okay, anyway, your first uh, app building experience is over. The next thing we're going to do is, is kind of make it a little more complex. We're going to add a picture of Malcolm X and we're going to make it so we can pause the speeches. And if you start playing MLK and tap on Malcolm X, it'll pause um, MLK, that kind of thing. Okay, so anyway, happy app building.